We're here in late October 2015, uh, looking at the Brooks project and how it's advanced so far. There are really three stages to the work that's been taking place. The first focus is here on the main cylinders of the locomotive. We wanted to examine and see what wear, etc. had been taking place on the loco during its service, um, and so we needed to remove the front buffer beam. This has allowed access to the cylinders for us to examine their condition. Um, removing the cylinder covers also allows us to have a look at the slide valves which are located in between here and these are responsible for admitting steam uh, to the cylinders and also releasing exhaust to the chimney um, which is vital for drafting the locomotive when it's running. This is the piston, uh, one of the main ones for the locomotive. As you can see, it also has two piston rings. These metal rings fit into the grooves here and they provide a seal when the locomotive is in motion. As a result of the motion forwards and backwards of the pistons quite regularly, these piston rings obviously get quite worn. They're actually designed, as you can see from the motion here, to spring out slightly. This allows them to expand to the outside of the cylinder and provide a steam tight seal. They're located in these grooves round here. As I said, there should be a second one here. And these are gonna need some considerable work, possibly complete replacement, as they are quite worn. The actual piston itself shouldn't be so bad because the cylinder bore is still quite true and the original sizes will be satisfactory to use again. So I've been doing some work on the locomotive's motion. One of the really important aspects of that is making sure that everything is true, straight and in line. Uh, for that, we set up this jig along the length of the locomotive, which will allow us to put rods across the locomotive through the horn guides, but also allow us to measure elements on the outside of the locomotive in comparison to the crank pins and other sections of the uh, motion. Another section that we've been doing is working on the axle boxes here. Um, these have been out, they've been overhauled, and also they've been replaced into the horn guides here, which allow us to see if they're true and if they fit. Um, we're quite happy with the condition of those, so we've also had a look at the journals, which are the bearing section of the locomotive, um, and they fit neatly inside the axle boxes when the overhaul has been completed. But we need a chock that will go in there for a start. Right. That'll stop it going anywhere. That's probably enough to do the next section. Just need to see if it's cut out the other bit. There we go. Another important part of this jig is to ensure that when the motion is set up, all the alignment's correct. This is very important once we reassemble the locomotive because the pistons, which we saw earlier, need to have an exact travel in the cylinders. If that travel is too much in one direction, it may hit the front cylinder cover and break that. If it's too much in the other direction, it may hit the rear cylinder cover and break that. As these are castings and as everything is quite old and original, uh, we want to avoid, obviously, any damage like that any damage like that is pretty much catastrophic for locomotive and would entail us disassembling everything again, having to realign it, and basically this would cost a lot of money um, and a lot of man hours in the time consumed. The third focus of the overhaul is here with the brake gear. One of the important things about the locomotive is that it was very worn in the bottom end, that is the motion, the brake gear and other things, so a lot of work is required. Here on this brake operating lever, you can see that we've done quite a considerable amount of work at one end and the other, where originally the operating linkages were attached. We've actually filled these with weld. We're going to machine them back, and then we will re-drill them, bore them, and hone them to ensure that they're back to the original size. When we first found these, they were incredibly damaged. They were oval, the holes were very much worn, um, and we need to ensure that in future, obviously, the brakes of the locomotive are completely functional. They're one of the most important areas of the engine to get the overhaul right on. One of the most important parts of this section of the locomotive is actually that the brake shaft is located onto this operating arm. So for that function, we actually have a keyway, a rectangular keyway here, which matches up with the same on the brake shaft and a pin is driven into it. 
that allows everything basically to function properly, everything to lock together and to ensure that there's no movement which can cause unnecessary wear. We'll have a look at the brake shaft in a second which also shows this rectangular keyway which matches up with the brake operating lever. Here we are with the brake shaft. You can see the rectangular keyway which we saw earlier. That has got quite a lot of wear in it, so we've had to do some work to make sure that it's clean, it's back in the right shape, and it'll actually match up with a brake lever that we saw earlier. There are two elements to the end of the brake shaft. The first here goes in the main bearings, which you can see here next to the locomotive. They had about a quarter of an inch of wear in them, so they will have to have a bush in the top, and that will match up precisely with the end of this brake shaft. The other section here in the middle, as we said earlier, works with a brake lever and actually is permanently keyed together, whereas this needs to have a rotational movement in it.